Oh, okay. I'm around the area, Santa Clara, Santana Row, this area. Yeah, Santana Row. Yeah, I know that yeah. area. That's a cool spot. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, so everybody, welcome. This is a street text demo. In case you're wondering, it's not where you go and log in your kids <laughs> for their classes. So um, we've got a couple more coming in here. So how many of you have activated a trial and actually have a dashboard, maybe by show of hands? Yeah? How many of you are just kind of coming in and cruising, checking things out? That's good too. Um, so if you are wanting to try the Street Text trial out, you just go to streettext.com and essentially set up a free trial. Now, um, the thing about it is, I'm just gonna mute everybody so we don't have any background noise in the beginning. Um, the thing about it is Street Text is free for the trial. What is not free would be the advertising spend on Facebook, okay? So here's what you gotta know about Facebook. They'll spend your money. <laughs> no matter what you do, they'll spend your money. They, they, that's what they do. They're amazing at spending money, spending people's money. Um, so what we wanna show you is actually how to tap into Facebook and make educated and informed decisions within the first 24 hours. So we have worked closely with Facebook since 2015. Um, I think we've generated over 3 million leads and one of our favorite funnels and that we're gonna really be working on together today has a 60% click to contact ratio, okay? So that's unheard of in the industry. If anybody does marketing or advertising um, and you, you try to set up your ads on Facebook, how many of you set up a Facebook ad before? A show of hands, okay. Now, if you get it right sometimes, it's like, yes, I did it and I'm getting leads. But oftentimes you just spend money for branding and nothing happens and you're frustrated. How many of you would consider um, the Facebook ad manager kind of a, a frustrating place? Yeah, yeah, so, so if you get comfortable with it. Now, what we've done is we've taken Facebook and brought it into street text basically and just broke down the ad manager in a simple way so you don't even have to go over there to figure it out it's going to pull in your data directly and really there's three numbers that you need to be concerned of uh, well i would say four number one how much you're spending okay because it's going to show you how much you're spending every single day but number two how does that spend translate so for for us i think there's a, some key numbers cost per click Okay, cost per click is something to think about. And it'll make a lot of sense because if you're getting, if you're tapping into a funnel that the cross, you know, right now, this last month alone, about 20,000 people testing, um, on average produces a 60% cost, uh, or I'd say click to contact ratio. So that means six out of every 10 clicks. So that means if you're getting lots of clicks, you're going to get leads. So here are the numbers that are our averages right now across Canada and US. And you, you have to combine high-end markets. You know, let's talk about the Silicon Valley in LA, Fargo, North Dakota, somewhere in the Midwest and everything in between, right? That's what we're talking about. So you got to think about what would the, I don't know what the average um, home would cost if you combined everyone together. I don't know if anyone ever has that data in front of them. But the average cost per lead is about a $2 address, a $6 email, and about an $18 phone number, okay? On this particular funnel that we're gonna set up today. So average is only average when you're not testing. Average is only average too, and that includes best, um, not sometimes often not doing the best practice and just trying to set this up yourself. And then how many of you are familiar with the 15 mile minimum radius because of the Housing Discriminatory Act? That is a big deal. Because if you are setting up ads that don't really factor that in, you're, you're kind of missing out because you're positioning your ad in front of an audience that could be just scrolling past by it because you're not applying that rule. So if you have anything on your ad that says like, you know, we were just talking about the Silicon Valley and you're in like San Jose, right? Um, and all of a sudden you start setting up your ad for San Jose but you're not acknowledging the 15 miles around San Jose, then anybody who outside of San Jose would say, well, that's not me. I'm gonna to scroll past this. So it's extremely important to think about best practices when you're setting up an ad. Now, here's another thing. 
StreetX has also kind of perfected something we call the split test. Now, every, anybody know what an A-B test would be? An A-B test is basically running two ads side by side and seeing which one's better, right? And they're different from one another. It could be a slight change. Now, here's a split test. A split test is running the identical ad conservatively at least three times. And the reason why you're doing that is because you're split testing anybody. I'll get, let you guys get the guess. Who are you split testing in this 15 miles? The audience. The audience. Every time you run a brand new ad, Facebook is putting it in front of a new sample audience. So if you know, here, here's the easiest metaphor I can give to you. If, you. if anybody ever goes and plays their hand at, in Vegas, you know, let's go to a blackjack table or something, right? Let's go play some poker. If you want to go there to the, to the table or roulette and you just say, I'm going to go one time and see if I win. That's, just, that's, when you, that's what you do when you go and run one ad at a time. It's like, okay, maybe you get the ace, maybe you don't. When you sample a proven template like ours that's giving 60% click to contact ratios, the best thing you could do with that is duplicate that as many times over as possible because it all comes down to the, the audience it gets in front of. And in 15 miles, like in a place like the Silicon Valley, that's some potentially millions of people that live there. So you can't assume that the first 500 people reached is going to give you the best data or even represent, in this case, the homeowners you're looking for. Make sense? Okay. Who would like to be, um, you know, essentially the, yeah. Oh, you would. <laughs> it's like you've already yes. been here or something. Yes, because I think it's going to give everybody an idea because I just started and I have uh, multiple funnels going on on a listing and also trying to get sellers. So maybe it's a good example to test. Yeah, yeah well, we'll, we'll test. We'll take a look at it. Well, I mean, so you have a live account though already. So you are your full sign up. Okay? As of yesterday, yes. As of yesterday. Okay, let's 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 see if we got a trial account because it's a little bit different. Sh um, oh, you know. okay. Yeah, no, but I, I appreciate you being up front. Who has a trial account that I could use? Chris? Awesome. Okay, Miguel, we'll use your second too. I like the participation here. Chris Cartwright. Let me go find it. There it is. All right, Chris Cart, right, I am your coach. All right, so every one of you is assigned a coach, by the way. Here's my recommendation. It's complimentary. You know, no one's gonna try to sell you on anything. Like I'm sure you've been burned by many companies in the past. So take advantage of it. We're here to, to, to show you that this is a community driven tool. You, you have to love the idea of learning because we are all about education. We love to share our scripts, our strategies, our content. Like there's no one, there's no exclusivity on Facebook. So there's no one tr like trying to compete against one another. Okay. That's the one thing you got to know. Like I can have, you know, I have 15 agents in our local market and they're all cr doing great because everybody can tap into a phenomenal ad. But once that lead comes to you, it's yours. It's not going anywhere else. So just re realize that the top of funnel is all about the passive marketing scroll. If I'm on Facebook right now, I'm not looking for, for a realtor to sell or buy, you know, I'm not, I'm not there doing that. I'm not on, on uh, my Facebook newsfeed. What are we there for every morning? Like, cause it's mindless scrolling, it's entertainment, right? So think about why you're on Facebook and Instagram. It's just, you log in, it's almost mindless kind of come in and it just scroll, scroll, scroll bam, something has to be in front of them that stops that scroll and creates a click. Now that click is where the opportunity begins, especially if you're running this type of funnel. And really it's not about even the, the, um, the click itself and your brand and all that stuff and like having a showy home or a visual or a picture there. It's about what happens once they submit the personal details. That experience, the moment their email is inputted, that experience, the moment a phone number is submitted is what makes you different and unique, right? It's that ability to create connection and start a conversation that what makes our most successful agents win as opposed to just lead generation because everybody can promise the, the world with leads, okay? 
but you're going to need to think about the day and age we live in, especially now with COVID, everything is, is now like virtual, digital. Zoom is becoming uh, a thing that we all use and leverage every single day. And guess, guess what? Your, your email should be no different. If you're going to be running any sort of top of funnel solution, consider what's the experience on the other side of that email sub submitted? Are they getting a chance to know you? Guess what? It's called video email. Okay, that's, that's the day and age we live in now. So, and tracking, tracking is massive. So if you're gonna send something to anybody, you better have tracking associated with it to show opens, to show plays, to show clicks being um, taken, taken uh, inventory of. Okay, let's get right into the dashboard because I'm sure you're all visual people like myself. Okay, so when you first get into here, um, you're kind of trying to figure out what's happening. Where's my ads? What am I looking at? Um, and so, I would say there's a couple of things that you want to do. Obviously, if you're run, if you've started running an ad, let's go to view your ad, and that would be in the you know hint hint the ad section. Okay. Now, when you view your ad, there's a view your ad, and there's a view link. Now, here's their data I was telling you guys about. Okay. If you run an ad at nine dollars a day, which is what most typically most people start off at, I mean, and I think here's the thing. We've been running $9 a day for more than four years now. At some point, I think you got to consider shifting it up if you're in a competitive market. But well, you know, you can always start wherever you want to go, but you're subject to how Facebook delivers it. So in this case, Chris has ran an ad and he's let it spend probably for about three and a half days now, spent $34.32 on this ad. Six leads has been generated, two of those provide email. So it's about a $5.72 address and a $17 email at this point. A little high on my end, um, but we'll split that. We'll split test that and we'll show them how to adjust that. Um, 16 clicks. So from what I'm, what I'm really trying to show on this funnel is that we want it more, because if you look at leads to clicks, that's six out of 16. That's a little bit lower than I would like to see. I'd like to see it more above 50 to 60% click to contact ratio. That's, if that's the average, that's what I wanna see. So we see 16 clicks here, a $2.15 click. I'd like to see that a little bit lower as well, but those are the numbers you should concern yourself with. And 1,858 people reached, he's getting about 465 people viewing this a day. So essentially, I think you can make your educated decision by about 500 people reached. That's generally when Facebook has found their sample audience and developed some sort of algorithm. Okay, so that's why we say usually in about 24 hours, you can figure out if this is an ad you want to continue running or not. So if you view your ad, this is what Chris has got out there. If someone were to buy your new market home, would you sell it? Find its value in the current market. Now I get it. Why would you run a map? <laughs> well, trust me, the map has never failed us. And the reason being is because when I click on this, av this map, the congruency, the experience between here and to here, especially from the smartphone, where most of these people are actually capturing their information, is very easy. And a map is something we use every single day, right? What about when we go anywhere? <laughs> you know, we're so used to just pulling out our Google map application or a map on our phones and starting to drive. Right, And I think that's the key is you're using something that is non-invasive, not the typical realtor sales um, advertising house image that everybody uses. And this is what makes it so easy to click on because it doesn't feel like you're trying to sell me anything. I just wanna find the value of my home and it's bold down here, right? So it's interrupting the newsfeed, the click to contact becomes here. And now let's just figure out as the homeowner's perspective, what's happening. So the moment they go from the ad into the landing page, this is the dynamic nature of the funnel. Unlike Facebook lead ads, where you're capturing all their information up front, we're asking for small pieces of information. Obviously the most intentional being in the beginning, the address, because that is the information you would need to begin to analyze their home's value. And that's why it's such a great funnel. Now, when I go in to put this, it's powered by Google. It makes it really easy to find my address whatever that is, it'll pull it up quite easily for that person. 
They'll click on analyze my property. And that moment that happens, if you go to your contacts, like you can see here, here's your contacts at, with at least an email, but there's also an address only section in your contacts. So when you go to your contacts, you can see that I just threw in my address and obviously I haven't gone deeper into the funnel yet. So addresses stay addresses if they don't go into the next step, which would be send me my property valuation. And the beauty behind this too, ladies and gentlemen, is you have to click on email permission to move forward. If I click next here, it doesn't move forward. So that's on, this is for your favor. I mean, the, the key is if they give you email permission, they say, yes, you're allowed to contact me. Okay. And the moment they do that activates our auto email responder and a nine month long drip email campaign. Right. So immediately at that moment, an email is being submitted from you to the lead, no matter what happens. And our most um, experienced and successful clients are doing something like this the moment they get that email fired off. And this this can be easily built into your automations so that. Hey. You get to create the experience you want that person to have now. It's no longer, you know, the thought for that lead perhaps was, oh, I'm getting an automated CMA or a home value, you know, oh, I was just curious or whatever their defense mechanism might be. If you light them up with a quick little video introducing yourself and communicating who you are and how you're going to help them, that's all we're looking for in that moment. And, you know, I'm a, I'm a big fan of, of stuff like this because, you know, the little gif, even if, even in this case, in this, in this circumstance, this, if, if no one clicked on that, perhaps they were busy, they couldn't, you know, they're at work or something. Even the little gif opens up her personality and her body language right there. Okay. And you can personalize it, create a call to action, you know, a little link to your calendar or, or a link to Facebook um, and ask the questions that you want to ask to get this, the process started. Right. Everybody, everybody has a different way of doing things. Are you all familiar with, uh, you know, your disc profile? Right. You guys ever heard of that? It's, it's true for every homeowner too. You got to think about what type of homeowner these people are. Are they are highly analytical people? You know, are they just getting you the information people? Um, no different from the way you present yourself, because in this circumstance, we like to call it the no like and trust model. The top of funnel is all about creating a relationship. It's not about selling their home. It's about being an indispensable resource and being someone that is willing to take it for the long run, even if they're ready to sell ever. Okay. Even if they're just potential renter of that home, even if they're a buyer looking at home, even if they're just a nosy neighbor, you're just there to serve. And the more people you can serve, the more you can come from contribution, the bigger your database becomes. And this is where my most successful agents are doing double digit. In some cases, I have triple digit transactions of people that have done street text over the years because it just builds and builds and builds because you're spent, you're tapping into very low cost leads, but you got to learn how to cultivate that relationship and use the right systems to do it. Um, is there a sample of, of welcoming videos that we can get? Yeah, you, you're going to be, we're going to show you a ton and ton and ton. Um, one of the things that I would recommend is figure out who your coach is. If you have one, if you don't have one, um, then sign up for a free trial. Cause why not? Um, you'll be assigned a coach. And secondly, uh, we want to invite you into the Facebook group that we have. It's called the Street Text Insider Group. So that group right here has got so many. Here's a, one cool post just to let you know, like this, this gal just is on fire. She's out of Las Vegas. She, she basically, once the lead comes in, she sends them a video. She uses KV Core, um, but you can use whatever you want. Um, she adds them on her KV core. She tracks them and, and sends them on, um, sees them on Facebook. And then she adds them on Facebook. So she's doing some personal connection on Facebook too. She sends them a video introducing herself, letting them know that she's a real person and working on her estimates. Surprise, surprise, right? Face to face. Um, she always tells them in her video that this is just an initial estimate. I always ask them to book their meeting with me with a Calendly link, okay, or a calendar link. I'm sure you guys know what that's all about. She sends them a CMA and then she sets them up for market reports of their area and they receive it bi-weekly. Smart, right? 
follow up, asking if they received it, checking on um, if they have any questions about their evaluation. She offers advice on how to prepare their home and buyers give the buyers an impression. Again, they need to book their meeting with her. And she then, then asks for another appointment. She gives them tips on how home selling works, constant follow up. So that's the type of, of you know, stuff you get here in the group because there's so many people doing their own system. Some people use HomeBot, some people use, you know, in, in Canada it would be called HomeBeat. Um, but I would say all of you would, should definitely consider, you know, we do mailers and I would definitely consider um, a video email solution. There's a couple that come to mind um, that would be BombBomb. Bomb. This one right here, I'll, I'll put it in the um, bombbomb.com forward slash street text. Another one um, would be another, another one would be um, Dub. Is this something that I've seen come out kind of a merger uh, recently? But I wouldn't use YouTube. I wouldn't use Vimeo because that's static and people are going to notice that. So it's all about the impression you provide. Any questions so far? You can totally inter uh, unmute yourself because I know I, I can get carried away here. No? Keep going? All right. Let's go back into here. Um, we also have, so, so here's an example. Okay, so, so if someone submits their email, this is what you could have in there. I mean, it, it, there's a million ways to do this, but I love this example because it's so counter what, what most people think that would be in that email. Hi, I'm Marley with Elevate Real Estate. I got your request for the home price valuation and I am on it. Oh, and by the way, I left a link to my Facebook profile page below. I'll just be sending you a really quick friend request. Want to make sure you get a chance to meet me. I'll talk soon. Bye. Quick friend request. Why would she do that? Hmm. I wonder, because when you connect with somebody on Facebook, you get Facebook Messenger. And Facebook Messenger is your end game. And now you can leverage Facebook as a CRM and develop lists. Okay. It's powerful. No one's sitting in their inbox, everybody, every day. No one's sitting in their inbox. Your emails, even if you have the most incredible CRM, it's not your end game. Personal connections, your end game, and especially understanding if you're gonna get a lead from Facebook, you wanna be in their presence every single day. There's only one way to do that, is to connect on Facebook, okay? That's what humanizes this process. That's what develops a relationship. And that's where they get to see you as a real human being anyways. It's not, you know, you don't want to just wear, put on your realtor hat forever. People want to get to know you and see every part of you, what you represent, who you are, you know, what you're making for food tonight. <laughs> that's the real stuff. Like that's the relatable stuff. And that's where people connect. You could be the most experienced, you know, five prestigious star realtor and done amazing uh, deals, but that doesn't mean anything when someone submits their information for the first time. You're not gonna get that opportunity until you can create a conversation opportunity. Then your experience comes into to, to factor there. Okay, now back into the funnel. So just the reason why I wanted to stop there for a second is because if you're leading with an address and email before you even go further into the funnel, you gotta acknowledge that as gold. And now in, in today's day and age, email is gold for people that can see it that way. But you have to learn how to get opens at high percentages and you gotta learn how to get video plays and video clicks. And we, we're passionate about that. We'll show you how to do that. If they get to this funnel, part of the funnel, they're gonna tell you about the condition of the property, details, need a bit of work, good, et cetera, et cetera. Age updates, amenities, perhaps there was a recent reno. They can say, hey, 10 years old. New kitchen, okay, or not. Remember, if your email already fired off at this moment, you have an excellent chance of connecting. And then this is where they tell you, you know, hey, I need to sell immediately, which we know is, you know, rare. But when they do, don't assume that it's, it could be, I want the home value immediately. Don't assume anything. And, and don't even, like, if I see it, I see a lot of leads that put in just curious and hint, hint, that's a defense mechanism most of the time, you know. No one wants to be sold on anything. So remember, you better focus and shift the way you're doing these type of conversion leads from anything you've done with Zillow and Trulia, Realtor, or Bottom of the Funnel, or even Google. The top of funnel 
is all about how you create a friendly conversation, you know? And it's not about, you know, if they feel like you're just trying to sell their home right off the get-go, they're gone. You won't even another chance. Click next. So this is where you can do a little bit of a branding because obviously this is where that you're gonna get their name and phone number. So in your case, Chris, I would probably go and do a couple of things. Um, I would go to your profile on the settings and pull in like a little slogan because the slogan is going to be um, right next to your picture. So you can do something like, you know, your friendly neighborhood expert. You can go change this. I'll just do this for a quick example. Um, definitely update your website too, because that's going to be pulling into your automation in terms of the automatic emails being sent out. Okay. So make sure to update that as well. You click save changes. Um, another thing you want to look at is your Facebook page. So if you go to your Facebook pages and click on the reviews button, you do have some great reviews. So those can be pulled in as well. So um, I will say, let's put it down here, this, this one right here. And then check this out. As soon as I update both that information, that, that kind of is a nice change for you because it, it will enhance your ability, I think, to pull more phone numbers. A little bit, little bit of a Facebook review um, and a tagline slogan. And then before I submit my own information, here is my phone number. I just wanna make sure you've updated your, um, oh, you haven't yet, so this is good too. So this little conversations tab in your dashboard, this is what allows you to use our speed to lead, or I should say your text message autoresponder. Um, it is not your number that we're gonna be pulling in, and it is not you they think they're speaking to when this text message goes out. It is Julie. Julie is your new AI, okay? We call her Julie. And she actually, you don't want to change her name unless her, your name is Julie, because <laughs> maybe that might be a little bit weird if you're a realtor named Julie and your assistant was named Julie. Um, but once you activate this, it'll pull up a five text message campaign, and they're all designed to create a conversation with your leads. Um, and it automatically stops once they respond. But I will just quickly, really quickly see what we have available in the 289 area code. So you can just find your local area code, which I just did, and add that number in. And then all of a sudden you have a local text message assistant, which is cool. So that, by the way, um, in your funnel settings, if we go to all automations, this is why you have the code, so don't worry about trying to follow along with me. But I just want to let you know that in about three minutes, like once I go put in my phone number right here, in about three minutes, I'm going to be getting a text message. And it's going to say, hi, Marcus, this is Julie. I work with Chris. I see you're interested in your home value. Is there anything specific about your home that may affect his value, i.e. updates? All customizable, by the way. Like, if you want to change that because you're like, oh, that's the same thing everybody always asks. I'm like, yeah, I agree. I wouldn't ask that. But, you know, you got to you got to kind of come in here and start customizing and editing this to, to reflect your personality. Because everybody's going to have, you know, hey, what do you love most about your home? You know, hey, if there was one thing you were to change, what would it be? There's a lot of great questions we can ask. Or, you know, hey, just want to let you know we sent you an email. Um, you know, Chris included a video just so you get a chance to know him. He'll be working on your home value shortly. That, that type of stuff would be the cool thing to do, I think, if you're going to start using and customizing the automations. Okay. So that's the full-on experience, at least from the the seller's perspective. And we do the buyer campaigns, we do the listing campaigns, we do even outside the box, like whatever you wanna wait, run. We have custom ads classes, just so you know, um, Street Text is not just seller lead generation, even though that's what we're known for. Um, we, we have weekly masterminds where we invite our entire community. We have, you know, on average 50, 75, sometimes 100 people come and just share from all over North America what they're doing to win. You know, and I'm including people like Donna, who've done a couple hundred deals. I'm including people that have done double digit transactions and then the brand new. So we get all fresh perspectives, strategies, integrations, scripts, everything what we're doing to win. And it's so powerful when you come to this meeting. Everybody's always invited to this, even if you don't move forward with Street Text. It's this link right here, calendly.com forward slash Street Text. I'll put that in the chat feature. And we have Facebook lead conversion workshops. Um, you're at this one right here, the become a Facebook lead generation machine. 
but we also have workshops where we review your ad performance and we help you do it even better and even custom ads classes. Uh, you do have a free academy course too, where you learn, you know, really cool stuff like, um, you know, how to customize this, this information, pull in video. Hey, how about the script that got Jessica five listing appointments in her first week? Probably would want to see what she's doing there. So this, this course comes along with it for free too. And um, yeah, we're just going to help you get set up. So I think um, the, the big part of this now, obviously, is to learn how to tap into Facebook so that it's not wasting your money and turn off ads. If in my case, I would say if I'm not getting at least an email in the first 24 hours, I would pause my ad. Did you hear me on that one? If I don't get at least an email in the first 24 hours, with the exception of maybe some of the higher end million dollar markets, I would probably pause my ad. And that's given if we're kind of running at that $10 ad spend. Because if I'm averaging $6 an email across North America, then let's, let's, let's try to get at least a couple of those in the first 24 hours for any given ad. So how do you hire your chances of doing that? Well, you test, you do something called a split test. Um, and by the way, when you're talking about, do we have different ads? We have a, so many different ads. I mean, so if you look at our funnels, Right now, you guys are, are you know, limited the seven day trial templates and you've got a seller, buyer and listing, but we have member only templates that you could just drop so many different variations in like this one right here. You can pull in any image you want. Like you see this blue house, but I see people put in images of like the Hollywood sign or, you know, the San Francisco Bay Bridge or you name it and just crush it. I mean, because the, the key is you're just dropping the stopping the uh, the news feed and this one just says what's your home really worth enter your address receive your home value and it's got about a 63.6 click to contact ratio right now it's averaging a dollar 88 cost per lead lower cost per phone number right around 15 to 16 bucks right now and about a five dollar email so it's actually working significantly a little bit better than the the one we have in trial um, but buyers are no different we have facebook lead ads we have custom ads we have a ton of different funnel templates for you, all with built-in automations, SMS, email, et cetera. But for you guys really trying to get into the realm of how to tap into sellers, this is hard to beat, so hard to beat. Um, Chris, do you have the ability to unmute yourself? If you're there, Chris Cartwright. Yep, I'm here, sorry. Yeah, no problem. Okay, so Chris, let me show you kind of how this, this works and you guys can use this as an example. So when you come into this seller template, and let's, let's for now just pause the ad you have because I think we can perform better with it. Okay. And let's consider a best practice ad. So what Facebook is doing, and I think Canada, by the way, has about a month left of which they can use more targeted um, advertising in terms of like, going into new market, going into a kilometer and so forth. That's going to change though, just like the United States. So you might want to get used to expanding your sphere a little bit wider. Um, just to get comfortable with the fact that it's going to naturally go to 24 kilometers, Chris. Okay. okay. 15 miles is 24 kilometers, kilometers in Canadian standards. Yep. Um, so yep. what I recommend is when you see this blank map on how to develop an ad, bypass it, go right to the next step. And I'll tell you why, because we need to first understand who we're targeting and get a visual for who we're targeting. So let me drop a pin to show you what I mean. So if we're talking about new market, right? And I went and typed in new market Ontario, and then I went and clicked on this toggle full screen view. You see what 24 kilometers would be if I did it this way? Wow. Yeah, I know. It's a lot. So, it is a lot. So you gotta you gotta think about well, you know, hey, would you will would you be willing to work in these areas? And if not, maybe you prefer them out. I mean, hey, you can try for the next month to to target as much as you want just by going into new market. But I think opening yourself up to a few opportunities right now and just seeing, hey, you know what? Even if I don't want to serve this, I can always make some money by referring this over to an agent I do know in this market. Yep. Um, so here's the thing. When you look at north, south, east, and west, you get a good visual of what, let's just say new markets, your pin drop. It doesn't have to be because you can move this, you can move this circle wherever you want to go. Yeah. Okay. 
But assuming new markets are pin drop, now you're looking at upwards of Belfort Beach, Zephyr, uh, Goodwood down to Greensboro, a little bit of Markham Vaughn, Richmond Hill, and then kind of heading into, you know, Lloyd Town, Newt Robinson, so forth, right? So if that's your now your new 15 mile, 24 kilometer idea, you now have to shift into, okay, well, what would I design as my ad? So first and foremost, you start with your pin drop. Always start with your pin drop, everybody. When you develop an ad, go to the pin drop, get clear on the pin drop, because once you get it, you click done. And you do this little longitude latitude number. It's like 44.0592 minus 79. That, that is means you've locked in on a longitude latitude as a pin drop. Everybody following me here so far? Yeah, yep. thumbs up. Get it? Perfect. Okay, now if I go back, now, I would then put in that same address, okay? <clears throat> and I would look, because you have different ways of, of running an image in front of them. You can run it as a satellite, as a map, as a terrain, depending on the mountains and so forth. We'll start with the map so you just can see it better. Um, and I'm gonna zoom out, right? And I'm in, this in this case, I'm gonna zoom out twice because I wanna make sure the image I'm using reflects the actual targeting that I just chose with my pin drop. Make sense? Because if I, if you guys go straight into this idea of, hey, I'm going to go right into new market and I'm going to bypass the fact that Facebook is still going to put it in front of 15 miles. That's why you're going to be tapping into a high cost per click because you're, they're going to be a legit majority of the audience that Facebook is putting in front of us say, that's not me. That's not me. That's not me. Right. How do you make it? so that you're all inclusive with everybody. Um, you, you zoom out, you start with your pin drop, you zoom out accordingly, and you either leave this blank because you don't have to say anything here. I mean, you could put county verbiage and all that stuff, but I actually encourage you to leave it blank or what a lot of our, our uh, you know, agents are having fun using and getting good results with is they go to this website called emojipedia.org and they grab some home emojis. Right? And why? Because if you throw an emoji or two or three, that's kind of taking the place now. See what it's done there? If someone were to buy your home, because before people want, were wanted to put in New Market or Santa Clara or, you know, you name your town, your city. But the idea is you're not just targeting that area now, you're targeting 15 miles. So adjust your text, adjust your image to reflect that. And then ultimately now you've got yourself a best practice ad. You're, you've chosen your targeting already because you started there, right? So again, we start with the pin drop, we choose it, we get longitude, latitude, we go back, we use that same address, we adjust it. You can run it as a satellite, you can run it as a map, you can run it as terrain. Um, you have three options, Both all those options are good to test. That would be called an A-B test, by the way, not a split test every time you run a different style of, of image. That in itself, with a little bit of home emojis or leaving it blank altogether. You could, if you do emojis, why don't you test it without emojis? That's called an A-B test, right? Any small change is a, a, an A-B test. A split test is running the same ad, same image, same text, same targeting, but duplicating that ad set as many times as possible to run different audiences, okay? So in this case, if I ran this ad and went next, and then I, my estimated commission is what I think I would make on a, an average in that 15 miles. Leave it on Facebook. Don't worry about Instagram for now. And then deploy. By deploying that, you've just hit everything you needed to do with the best practice. You've got your audience locked in. Automations are being built with it. And then really our recommendation is to go right back to that funnel and do that two more times. Does that make sense? You do it two more times only because, surprise, surprise, your first 500 people reach is where Facebook's developing their algorithm. So don't ask me why, but that same ad in one audience could produce a phenomenal cost per click and get you a bunch of leads, while in the, the other audience, it produced like crap because it just got in front of the wrong audience that wasn't in the right mode that day. 
no different. We know that ad works. We've tested it 20,000 plus times this last month alone. But by testing and split testing the audiences, your chances of landing the ace, again, in the metaphor of, of us playing cards, is a lot higher. So the more you learn how to actually use the split test concept, by the way, guys, you can do this in your own marketing. You could figure out, go run your own ads right now, split test that ad, run it three, five, 10 times. Not so you can spend a bunch of money with Facebook, because by the way, if I associated $10 to each one of these ads and rent 10, the, the thought would be, well, that's a hundred bucks. I can't do that. Well, yeah, but what if you run 10 ads and the moment you start getting leads, you look to the contact because every contact we have has an ad ID. So if you get contacts early and fast, you can see which ad is doing what and then just pause all the other ads. And in that case, maybe you've only spent two or three bucks of that ad budget set. Does that make sense? It's kind of a way of gaming Facebook. And I like it. I mean, I haven't, it's, it hasn't failed me ever. So, you know, you should A, B and split the heck out of this funnel just to prove my concept. Not so you can spend a bunch of money because guess what? My challenge to you is if you split an A, B test, just be on it like a hawk watch the ad manager that comes in as these leads come in and, and I'll, and I'll approve my point home. Like usually it's the, it's the ad that develops the highest clicks or the most clicks early on. That's going to be your winner. And I, I usually, I like, I've never seen a circumstance where an ad spends and sucks in the first 24 hours and starts to take off. It's always the opposite. It's always the ad that gets the most leads the earliest is the ad that you'll continue with. Does that make sense? Okay, this is the this would be the time where some questions would would be uh, I think the perfect time to to open this up. So open up your uh, mic and ask away. Okay, I can start. What's that? I can start. Yeah. What's that? Because I ran many ads and I do have listings. Um, now with a bomb bomb video, can you define which one goes to the seller and you make a video for a buyer? Yeah, because you're going to have a, a lot of circumstances. You have your automations, right? Because with your automations, that's important, but it's still a numbers game. A percentage of those automations are being opened. I mean, they're all delivered. The, the ones that are not delivered are bogus emails. That means they're bounced and I'll show you that it's bounced. So for example, when you go into your settings, and you go to all emails. Mm -hmm. Well, if I go to this after submission, quick question, that's the first email of the seller side, but you'll have different emails for different circumstances for buyers. You're going to have a different buyer can you know, buyer emails for listings. You're gonna have listing emails, but for this nine month long trip campaign, let's start with this very first email that everybody gets. So if you look, you can edit it and there's records. If I hover over this record just shows me who's got it right. Mm -hmm. So, Right now, like Chris, I haven't opened it yet, but if I go to my email, click on my inbox, there's that email, right? And if I open it, that's gonna be tracked as an open in your dashboard, okay? So this is what I'm seeing and experiencing right now. So in here, when you go, there you go, I just refreshed the page, it just shows that I opened it. So you go into here to track to see if these people are getting your email and if they're opening it. So for example, talt78 at yahoo.com, it's been delivered to, but it hasn't opened yet. So you don't rely on your automations. They are a numbers game. You have to have an if then strategy. If, they, if you know it's been delivered, but you think it's gone to a filter and maybe they haven't opened it, you're gonna do what you should be doing is sending an additional email, a personal email with the tracking component. This is why I love something like BombBomb so much. It, it, this one, it's, I use Google Chrome and the extension, but I love the fact that when I send something, I'm tracking if it's being opened. I can create tracking behind it. Plus, if I'm sending a personalized, customized experience, right? Here's the thing you got to know. When you, when you use email, you're going to be working smarter, not harder. Part of that is you're going to develop... Um, you know, videos that are canned or, you know, smart videos where I can go in here and be like, hey, you know, um, like this, for example, hey, like it, you know, I created this and I can do stuff like this with my home value leads. 
So it feels like it's just made for them. But guess what? It's not. Um, it's, it's made for everyone, but it's going to feel very natural. I'm going to have a combination of automations and can responses, but I'm having my personal responses too, because if I want to acknowledge their home value, I think the best thing I could do is do a screen recording, just like Curtis has done right here, and walk them through their home. Hey, David, this is Curtis uh, with Big Block Realty. I got your request via Facebook for your home value. So thanks for watching this quick video. This should be your home right here in beautiful Point Loma. Um, so yeah, I, I took a look at four comparable sales near your home and uh, I made some adjustments to try to match it up with what your home might sell for in today's market. Um, I came up with about $980,000, but there's always a range. Um, so really this, this says 879 to 1 million and 59,000, probably realistically maybe 950, I would say on the low end up to about 1 million and 50,000, probably on the high end. Uh, that's, that's approximately what it would sell for right now. Uh, if you're thinking about selling, be happy to come over and take a look at it with you and get you a better idea and a plan to sell it for you. So hope you find this video helpful and hope to hear from you soon. Thanks so much, bye. So, I mean, I would probably use words like, this is what I'd position your home at, you know, instead of sell. Um, just a lot of it psychological, right? I think it's smart to try to not make them feel like they're just selling their home, but it just shows you the power of video and screen recording because now you can create the experience that you want them to have. You can position it against Zillow and Realtor and Redfin and all these things that you know they can basically go in and search for on the, online. Where's your value coming? What makes you unique? How are you gonna give them an in-depth market analysis? And you, you know, always bring in your experience of the neighborhood and what you know about what's happening in that area you know, recent sales, et cetera, all that good stuff. Um, that's because they're going to, they're going to take it. That's going to, what they're going to gravitate towards is like, um, you know, really being personal with that narration. Um, so, okay. okay. So any, any thoughts there, any questions? Yeah, I got a question. Um, in terms of audiences, is there something in the system that helps you target the audiences or do you do that all on your own and then just add your audiences to your campaigns? Well, Facebook, again, because the Housing Discriminatory Act, you have to start in a blank slate. So one of the things you have to recognize is that it goes in front of everybody to begin and your algorithm is starting to pick up lookalike audiences. So if Facebook start picking up on homeowners in the ages of 35 to 65, for example, it's going to naturally find more homeowners like that. But if you get a bunch of 18 year olds clicking, which hardly ever happens or something, you know, the, you know, outside of area leads or blah, 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 you name it the wrong audience. Facebook will also pick up on that algorithm. And in that case, you got to acknowledge when these ads come or these leads come in the ad ID and the ad ID will reveal to you the nature if that ad is a good performer or not. So what do you do? You, you encourage good algorithm by keeping an ad running. You, turn off an ad or pause it if it's giving you information you don't like. Because right. it'll naturally pull in look like audiences and mirror audiences, depending on how that algorithm is, is shaped in the first 500 people reached. All right, gotcha. Yeah. I wish, I mean, trust me, like the, the day where, you know, when we could go after homeowners who you make, you know, 100,000 or more and are, you know, driving a red Ferrari are over <laughs> because that's just, not a possible. So everybody, this levels the playing field for everybody, but it all absolutely works every time. Facebook is smart because they know you're not going to, uh, you know, advertise with them unless they, you can find an audience that is going to help you. So they'll, they'll do their thing to shift their algorithm to find you that ideal uh, client you're looking for. Okay. The key is a split test. I'm telling you, the key is, you know, conservatively, like try at least three of these for the first 24 hours. You can pause it, at, you know, right around the five dollars if you wanted to, but I mean, usually you want to give it around that five hundred people reached, and, and you'll start learning. You can split, you can A B emojis versus non emojis, satellite versus not satellite, and so forth. This this funnel works. Same with our buyers, though. You do the same thing with your buyer campaigns. You do the same thing with your listing campaigns, um, and then you know, every one of our funnels has has an opportunity to, to just drive leads your way. But the key is like leads are just the first step. Then it becomes a matter of how you 
personalize your automations and start focusing on the delivery of uh, you know, the experience you wanna provide. And that's where you wanna meet with your coach and kind of break this down a little bit more and think about the right systems so that you're not wasting a bunch of time just producing CNAs. Yeah? There is a question in the chat from yeah. Rebecca. What is it you need to have in place prior to getting leads? Is this tied into your CRM? Nothing's, nothing needs to be in place. I think ultimately you just gotta be open to using maybe solutions that you, you don't have in place. Like, you know, that bombbomb.com um, forward slash street text, that's a 14 day free trial. So if I'm running the top of funnel, I am considering, well, no one's ever met me before when they click on this ad. They sure don't think they've, they're meeting with anybody unless they get to the phone number submission area. So if they click on an ad from their newsfeed and they're interested in their home value and they submit their address and their, their email, well, what are their, what's the experience they're going to have when they get back into their inbox? And if that experience is not like a, a human connection, it's going to be interpreted in the wrong way for you. It doesn't matter how amazing and gifted you are as a writer. Right. So I think the important piece is to remember you're digitally door knocking. You're digitally door knocking. Would you be the, per, the, the realtor that door knocked or let's just say doorbell ditched um, and knocked on their door and left a mail, piece of mail on the, on the floor and then ran as fast as you could and hope they actually read it the way you wanted it to? Or would you be there introducing yourself? That's the best thing I can compare email with video versus without email or without video. Um, so that, that's the thought process there is that's what's going to make you different from any other realtor is you. You are the difference, right? And we're, if we're talking about um, how many leads you can convert, well, you don't want to be in the uh, online lead generation number of one and a half percent, which everybody says, or whatever that is, one percent. That's only because a lot of people don't, are not adapting to the new technology that's available today. For people that are doing really well with street text, like, you know, like what you saw with uh, Katrina and the way she does her follow-up, that's what you got to consider. It's, it's work up front, but it's work for the future. Like this is the, the building of your future business. This is not the business that you're getting today. Like sure you get somebody relationally or maybe they're going through a divorce, right? Or financial issues or health problems. That, that always still happens with these funnels. But the majority of the leads are not ready to sell today. The majority of the leads are not ready to buy today. They're not scrolling down their Facebook saying, come sell my home. You're starting. Question. Yeah, go I'm ahead. Sorry. Yeah, no, go ahead. Um, so I watched a, a video, a couple of videos on street text. And a couple of the agents that are, are using street text indicated that when they get a first get a, a call back from the lead, that they don't, they let the automations uh, through street text take over. They don't respond so rapidly because sometimes it frightens the <laughs> the lead. They think, you know, they, they deny that it was them or whatever. It's just like they didn't expect such a rapid response. Yes. So I don't know, you know, that, that was kind of interesting because I mean, I think we've all been, I've been in the business for so long that it's always been, you know, get right back to that lead, call them. So it was a little, um, I well, don't it depends, know. It was it depends you on how, you, how you approach them. Because if you call and be like, mm -hmm. hey, it's Rebecca. I know you probably just randomly scrolling down your Facebook news feed and you clicked on my ad thinking that no one was going to be in touch with you. Um, I'm just let you know, I'm here for you. It's complimentary, no obligation. It's my way of giving back. And I do not like to give the internet's best guess. I want to work on your home as a, you know, customized. Sure. Well, that's what I think. I mean, I think that that, that makes sense. I, maybe I misread what they were saying, but. Um, it depends on personalities, right? It depends on what people approaches. I have some people that are amazing on the phone, but it's about your deliverability. Yes, right? I agree with that. I agree with that, yes. It's like, you're not so, gonna, hey, it looks like you just saw, were already wanting to sell immediately. Um, I'm, re I'm ready, let's do this. Right, right, right. The, the, yes, your voice inflection and, and everything comes across. Um, so um, on the seller side, I, I guess 
you have uh, you have experimented with this so much that is the property value one i suppose that is probably the primary one for the seller i would think well, i mean there's lots of ways to task okay? lots so of different ads there's a lot of different ads like right now you're right just now. seeing um the one in trial but like we have a really great one right now that people are testing i really like it's actually um i'll show you in the funnels it's this one down here. Um, home values have changed and yours um, and yours may have been affected. Find out now. I mean, that's perfect because home values have changed. Oh um, yeah. Depending like with, with the with the pandemic and everything, like yours may yeah. have been affected. We, we all want to know. So, you know, these small little things, you guys, it's so simple. It's a little simple stuff, but with, done correctly with the right funnel, that's how you get leads. And yeah. You know, I'm, I'm telling you, like, the, why go on and try to figure out this all out? Like when you can run templates, just go right out there and then split them. And then all of a sudden you have the right ad performance going. Then you 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 work with the community and you work sharing scripts and strategies and integrations that are working. It's like, don't reinvent the wheel if you can just study the persons that have done really well with it and just make it your own. So when That's you sign on, I know you get a coach, but do you get one? I mean, then permanently when you, I mean, yeah. there's somebody. Okay. So you have that person available. Yep. All right. I mean, but you have us all because we're always doing group training. Um, okay, I know it's the top of the hour, so I'll quickly lay out the um, the next steps. Obviously, text the last person that texted you. Go to streettext.com and sign up for a trial if you haven't done so already. Um, if you know who your coach is, just text them, hey, set up my split test because we can always do that for you as well um, or help you. And then, yeah, you're going to meet with that person. Um, everybody has their own way of, of coaching, by the way. But um, once you get this all set up and we work on this together, the, the ability to sign up beyond the trial would be three options. We have a 12-month upfront, which is 1920, um, Canadian or American, depending on what you're, where you're at. Um, and it renews monthly at 160. So you, 12 months, again, upfront, 1920, renews monthly at 160. A six month option is 1,020, renews monthly at 170. Um, and the three month option is 600, renews monthly at 200. Okay. Um, and that does include your ad spend, FYI, um, but includes everything else, especially the community, the training, the coaching, um, the automations. We just, we do it all with you. So, and, and you can integrate with all the systems you already have, um, whether it's follow up boss or, you know, you name it we'll show you how to do that. It's either going to be through Zappy or email parsing. Um, and yeah, that, that would be it. So, but you know, no, no point of really worrying about the, the pricing until you've had a phenomenal experience in trial. Right. Right. Make sure the trial experience, like we'll continue to work trial with you until you have the great experience. And then even if you're not ready to sign up now, you have access to all our, our coaching training classes for life and our, and our Facebook community. So it's, we know it's all about timing. So just make sure you, you get the proper experience so you know the value of street text. Sorry, you said uh, uh, all the pricing is in US dollars, right? Yes, US, yeah, yeah, US for US and Canadian for Canadian. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Cool. All right, um, you know, uh, send us in a, a text if you've got one already from somebody. And um, outside of that, you just set up your trial at streettext.com. And uh, we'll talk to you soon. Have a great weekend, everybody. Thank you.